Come Follow Up is a study and teaching resource provider through which you can have access to videos, artwork, and more to assist you in your personal, family, or other study and teaching opportunities. Resources are available through our website and also shared through our social media accounts. As with all other gospel resources, Come Follow Up is intended to enhance but not replace your study and teaching experience. Check out the full offering from Come Follow Up anytime at byutv.org slash comefollowup or search for us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. One of the most powerful shifts we can make as a leader is to shift from this place of knowing and to operate from a place of inquiry. My husband and I, we have four children, um, but 12, 13 years ago, it was a mere three children, ages six, four, and two. And I was talking to my buddy, Brian, at work, and I was, we were just commiserating about some of our, our parenting challenge. And I said, you know, Brian, I feel like I've become a, like a little dictator in my house. i become a bossy mom. And Brian acted very surprised by this. And he said, Liz, you don't strike me as a bossy mom. I said, let me describe bedtime at our house. And if you have the 642 combo pack at your house, you know exactly what this is like. It's, okay, kids, time for bed, put that away, go over here, help your sisters, get your pajamas on. No, 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 the tag goes in the back, turn that around, go brush your teeth, go back, use toothpaste. Time for a book, get a book, not that book, no big books, not five books, no princess books. Okay, give me a little book, good, story time done, say your prayers, get into bed, not my bed, out of her bed, back to bed, go to sleep. And, and there's no yelling, it's just constant telling night after night. And so Brian says, why don't you go home tonight and try speaking to your children only in the form of questions. And I went on about the ridiculous nature of this task and how this was going to be about four hours before I could get them to bed. And I then became really intrigued by this challenge. And I decided I would take this challenge. I've come to call it the extreme question challenge. And I would take it to its extreme. Nothing but questions would come out of my mouth. And we did. And, and dinner was interesting. And playtime was interesting. And we got to bedtime. I said, kids, what time is it? And they said, bedtime? I said, what do we do first? Where does that go? Who needs help getting their pajamas on? Who's gonna be the first to brush their teeth? Okay, whose turn is it to pick the story? What story are we gonna read? Who's gonna read the story, mom or dad? And then it was, okay, what do we do when story time's over? And they said, well, we pray, because they knew. And then my last question was, okay, who's ready for bed? Me, 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 pick me, pick me. And they went and they got in their beds and they stayed in their beds and I'm left in the hallway simply to wonder, how long have they known how to do this? I learned that when I asked the questions, other people found answers. And I learned that at work, when I asked the questions, people really didn't need me telling them what to do. They needed me to ask an intelligent question. We have to have routines, and there are certain things that we farmers have to do to the soil. You know, from the time you plant all the way to your harvest, and then at the, after the harvest, you have to tend to the soil and till it under and prepare it for the next spring. And so if you do neglect it, it's easy for weeds to come in. And we know weeds in a field come quick, just like weeds in our lives come quick. Mm -hmm. If we let our guard down, if we, are, if we are not consistently doing something, weeds are gonna grow. Okay. And I think that some things have to be scheduled. I think too often, you know, you'll make time to go to the show, you'll make time to play pickleball or whatever the case is, <laughs> but are we taking the time to read? Are we taking the time to go to the temple? Are we taking time to find the things that are bringing us closer to Christ and to fill the spirit more in our lives? And so as we do those things, then our soil will be ready. Within these chapters, there's a lot of references to the Pharisees. And I feel like sometimes it would be beneficial to understand their point of view, where they're coming from. Can we start there and just kind of get a little background on who they are and why there's so much attention on them? The Pharisees are a Jewish sect. Okay. So they're part of Judaism, but Judaism isn't just one monolithic ideology. There's multiple groups that are within Judaism that are following their practice as best they can. Maybe the best analogy we can give is Christianity. Okay. There's lots of Christians in the world, and you've got cells or sects of individuals who are following Christianity, but in a little bit different okay. way. And so the Pharisees are one of these Jewish sects uh, from antiquity. 
Now, the Pharisees, they start sometime around 150 years before the birth of Jesus, and they're part of this big revival. What's happened is their country has been under the jurisdiction of really mean oppressors mm -hmm. for a long time, and now they're starting to be liberated with the Hasmoneans. And with that liberation came a little bit more freedom to, well, this is my view of Judaism, and this is my view, okay. and then people are starting to separate. And so the Pharisees are one of those groups that separate at that time, about 150 years before Christ. Okay. In fact, the word Pharisee means set apart. So they see themselves as this special group. They see that they are the inheritors of the Mosaic tradition, the law of Moses. So the Sadducees, they center their view of Judaism on the temple, whereas the Pharisees center their view of Judaism and the, the laws of God in the text of the Bible and their oral tradition of how to interpret that. And what we see is Jesus is taking on the oral traditions that they have built up over time, some of which are not even based in the scriptures, or they have interpretations that seem to kind of play with the scriptures in ways that don't help people draw closer to God. So again, as Josh was saying, you have these different, different groups of Judaism going on at the time of Jesus. And Jesus is trying to help the people see the truth in the midst of all these different Jewish groups claiming they know how to lead people to God. They have no more wine. What wilt thou have me to do for thee, that will I do? For mine hour is not yet come. Whatsoever he saith unto you, see that ye do it. Gather the water vessels and fill them. Fill them. With water. Bear unto the governor of the feast. This is the first wedding feast I have ever attended, where the best of the wine has been saved for last. No! 
not my father's house and house of merchandise. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles which thou doest, except God be with him. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. How can these things be? Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. Even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believeth on him is not condemned, but he who believeth not on him is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. 
And this is the condemnation. That light has come into the world. And men love darkness more than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone who doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Give me to drink. How is it that our Jew asks drink of me, which I'm a woman of Samaria? The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wast have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. The well is deep. From whence then hast thou this living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? gave us this well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Sir, give me of this water, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Go, call thy husband, and come hither. I have no husband. Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidst thou truly. Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that it is in Jerusalem that men ought to worship. Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, and salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is the Spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth.
I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. And when he has come, he will tell us all things. I that speak unto thee am he. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. What think ye? He is guilty of death. Death. Yeah. Yeah. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him, twain. Give to him that asketh thee. And from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou not away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Take heed 
that ye do not do your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.